Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm joined by June Brigman. Uh, she is a comic book cover artist, penciler, illustrator, cat lover, and the co-creator of Marvel's Power Pack. Uh, June, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, did you hear that ding? I did. Okay. I heard that you wanted to be a jockey when you were growing up. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's true. I was one of those kids who was, I was one of those girls who was born horse crazy. Um, that was one of the first things I learned how to draw was, was horses. I, I didn't have a horse. Uh, so I would, I would draw lots of horses and read lots of horse books and thought I would grow up and be a, a jockey. Um, but the problem was I kept growing. So mm. <laughs> that didn't work out. But uh, then I did learn to ride horses and I, I, I have a horse and I, I do still ride. So uh, never got out on a track, but um, sometimes we go pretty fast. So oh, wow. kind of fulfilled that dream. Yeah. Uh, how many horses do you own? If you don't oh, mind if I ask. Just one. Just, just one. And is, <laughs> what, does, me, that's <laughs> I'm sure that one horse is enough. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, kind of a crazy thing to do, but uh, it, it's, but it's what I love. Yeah. Uh, does this horse have a name? Her name is Isabel. Oh, okay. So she, it's a she. Yeah. <laughs> a mare. Oh, okay. Um, how often do you get to see her? I, mean, uh, I try to uh, go three times a week. Uh, okay. I, she's not on my property. Right, I right. Keep her at a barn at a stable, and I, I try to ride three times a week. Wow. Okay. So you, would you say that you were a... Uh, uh, above average uh, jockey? <laughs> I do okay. I stay on most of the time. Oh, that's you good. Know? Yeah. I live to tell about it, so I, I guess that's a pretty good record. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the only reason why I know that is because um, you were at the San Diego Comic-Con, I think in 2014, and you were receiving the uh, Ink Pot Award for Achievement in Comic Art, and you gave a, like a panel presentation. Right. And that's the only reason why I know. So it's, it's not like that's like all over the internet or anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of funny. I was kind of wondering where that was coming from. So okay. yeah, that yeah. Is. Well, I mean, in, in my defense, it's one of the top results when you just search your name. So it's not like I did any like in-depth research on your, your upbringing. Um, but do you do conventions very often? Uh, not a lot. Some years there will be more than others. But I think the most I've ever done in a year is like maybe six. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Don't do a whole lot of conventions. I enjoy it very much, but I just, yeah, it doesn't work out for me to do that many. Yeah. What was the last one you went to? The last one I went to was um, in Chattanooga, Tennessee at the beginning of March of this year. Oh, and that was like right before. before the, the hit the fan. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was, I was supposed to go to a, a convention in, in England at the beginning of May. And oh, obviously okay. that, that did not happen. So uh, hoping for next year. Yeah, would that have been your first time to that particular convention? It was Portsmouth Con. Um, okay. And that would have been my first time at that convention, my first time in England. So oh, wow. I, was, I was really, really looking forward to that. And it's a, it's a big show. I'd heard lots of good buzz about. Uh, but, um, and, you know, hopefully maybe by 2021, things will have calmed down and we'll yeah. try again. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure by next year, everyone's going to be uh, full on going to every convention that they can. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, so yeah, and also when you were at San Diego in 2014, that was the 30th anniversary of Power Pack. I don't right. know. Um, can you tell me a little bit about who the Power Pack is for those of us who don't know about them? Uh, Power Pack, uh, it's uh, a group of siblings, brothers and sisters, um, at the time I was doing it, they were aged about five through 12. Mm -hmm. And the writer and I have tried to keep them at about that age. Um, and they got superpowers bestowed upon them by an alien who crash landed 
uh, in, in the ocean on the beach, hmm. uh, actually on the beach just outside their vacation home. And as he was dying, he transmitted his powers, one, an aspect of his power to each of the kids. And they really need those powers because right behind this very good alien was a very, a group of very bad aliens. Um, mm. You know, of course, to get the kids, destroy the earth, of all course. the usual. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. you know, there, there, were, there were kids superheroes with superpowers, but also all the problems and foibles and disputes that go on between brothers and sisters, especially with little kids. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's, that's basically Power Pack. I, I co-created it with the writer, Louise Simonson. And the first issue came out in, it was like spring of 1984. Oh yeah, 84, that's a good year. That was the year I was born, so. Okay. <laughs> um, how did you and Louise, well, so I guess let me back up. Um, how did you find yourself at Marvel? Um, I was looking for work. And I had worked with um, a guy named Steve Ringenberg on a job for DC. It was a DC new talent book. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to get started, trying to get my foot in the door. And Steve worked at Marvel as, I think, like an assistant editor. And he got me in the door. You could do that back then. If you knew somebody in the office uh, and you could get just get in the door, you didn't have to have an appointment really. Um, you know, once you were in, you could just go from office to office knocking oh, wow. on doors and showing your portfolio. Yeah, that would that would never happen now. It's right. Really, yeah, it's very different. It's yeah. I, honestly, I don't I don't even know if I could get in the door. Um, but this was an editor at Marvel at that time. And um, she didn't have any work for me then, but she had just kind of come up with this idea for, for Power Pack. And she asked me if I knew how to draw children. And I said, yeah, I, I did. Um, I had spent a summer at an amusement park called Six Flags Over Georgia when I was 16 <laughs> doing portraits. And they weren't oh, like- Oh, yes, yes. Characters. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like that. The characters. And I, yeah, they, they were, but these were like serious pastel studies. Um, not the big goofy, you know, head, big feet, that kind of thing. They're supposed to be serious. And um, did that summer, I did like, uh, I think over 600 portraits. And most of, them, most of them were probably pretty bad, but I learned a lot. And I did do a lot of children because parents always want their children done. Sure. And sure. Um, so I, I did have some clue about drawing children. And, you know, I did some samples. We put together a proposal and the editor in chief at the time, Jim Shooter, liked it. Basically shook our, shook our hand, gave his contract and said, go make comics. So, wow. And, and then is, how did you meet Luis and how did you both, you know, work on coming up with these new characters? Well, I mean, at that time, I was still living in um, just outside of Atlanta in Georgia. And um, on my visit to New York, I mean, I met with her and, you know, we talked about the character. She gave, she showed me her proposal. Um, I did sketches, um, some character designs, the basic character designs we ended up using. Um, most of it, gosh, this is a long time ago, but most of it was done on that first, that first visit to New York. And then, you know, I, I went back home to uh, Georgia and kept working. And, you know, there was no internet back then. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we talked on the phone a lot. And then um, we decided to move to New York. And we moved to White Plains just outside of New York City. So then I, we had, a, you know, we had a lot of face to face. I would come into the office and um, Weezy and her husband, Walt Simonson, were really, you know, generous people. And we mm -hmm. were, this was my husband and I, my husband, Roy Richardson, uh, also an artist. Uh, you know, they would take us out to dinner, have us over to their apartment. So we got to work out a lot of things, you know, face to face in person after that. 
That's, uh, that, that's actually pretty cool. Cause usually, you know, um, when an artist and a writer collaborate, it, sometimes there's, you know, that disconnect where you don't actually build a relationship first before coming up with a character. You kind of just get handed, you know, if you're an artist, you just get handed a description. You kind of have to come up with something. So, um, and we were kind of building, um, mm -hmm. these characters, yeah, they were Marvel universe, but, uh, you know, we had we had the this this fam the siblings, the brothers and sisters to figure out their parents, the good guys, the bad guys, other planets. Um, so it wasn't it, it was it was a really good working relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, we was very open to input and ideas, and it was it was a great collaboration. How did you uh, you both land on the names Alex, Julie, Jack, and Katie? Was that you know she came up with the names, and I I I wish I could remember exactly <laughs> how that happened. Yeah, that it's might been be a while. A, I have to do another another um, interview with, with Wheezy as a follow up. <laughs> um, that's a really good question. I should should know that, but she came up with them, and they may have been. I want to say they may have been based. Um, I mean, she has a daughter named Juliana, mm. so the Julie might have come from that, and then she had nieces and nephews, and it, that, I want to say that's where the names came from. Gotcha. I, I always wondered about that because, and I, I've, I've read a few things about you, and I've seen a couple interviews, but no one ever asked. And yeah, that's it, true. And it's not even <laughs> on, you know, it's not on the internet, and I was just like, what? these names must mean something. So yeah, I, I figured it was something yeah. um, personal-ish. Right, right. No, she, she, Wheezy did come up with, with the names for the characters. So I, yeah, I don't have, I, I think I'm right though. I think that these were uh, nieces and nephews. I think that's where I'm her, her nieces and nephews. Let, let's go with that. Got it. Okay. That sounds good to me. I, I mean, um, so you can see two covers here. I, I think they might look, the one on the left uh, might look familiar to you. The one on the left, definitely. Yeah. So this is actually the first cover of yours that I ever saw. Oh, really? Yeah. And um, I was actually interviewing Will Murray, who was the creator of Squirrel Girl. Mm -hmm. And when I was researching him, this image popped up all the time. And oh, that's Yeah. And I was like, who, who, who did this? Who made this cover? Because I instantly knew that it was an homage to the, the first appearance of Squirrel Girl um, from the 80s. And so, and I, I just wanna say I really enjoy, like it's the only one that I've seen that, have, that has imitated um, Eric Larson's cover and it, it, I really love it. So uh, yeah, can you tell me a little I'm bit like about I, I don't think that was my idea. I think, I, I think the homage, um, I believe that was the editor's idea I I, mm. I I didn't think of that um, but it was fun to do I mean I love Squirrel Girl and I you know it was just it's always a blast to get to draw characters like this that uh, you've never done before you know they're fun characters it's, it's a great book so uh, so yeah it, it was a, a neat job to do yeah I just really enjoyed it because you know even without knowing too much about Squirrel Girl, I instantly knew it was a callback. So I, I really appreciated that. Um, and it, it, you know, you, it's uh, very whimsical and very fun. So I, I, yeah. like, I like that art style. Um, so let me show you the next one here. So um, you mentioned that part of the reason why you were you know, so, a, a sought out artist at the time is because you were very um, good at drawing children, which is something that a lot of artists weren't good at. Um, was, was it, was there any hesitation or pressure to uh, draw adults, especially characters that are, you know, really well known like Spider-Man or like the X-Men or Avengers? Was, was it weird to switch to adults after doing children um, for a while? It was hard for me. I mean, this was, this was the age of superheroes. I mean, it was Marvel, it was DC. Um, this was a time that was, that was all about superheroes. And, and that is one of the main reasons I, I got into drawing comics is I, I loved, I didn't read comics as a kid, mm -hmm. but as an adult, I love the artwork. You know, I love, yeah. I love the superhero artists. 
And, um, but it was really difficult for me. I didn't really come from a, a background steeped in comics. I, I didn't start right reading comics or looking at comics until I was probably about 20 years old. So my background was more, I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I did. I was one of those kids who sat around drawing Spider-Man. You know. Oh, okay. I, I didn't do. I sat around drawing horses, and people, but real people and kids. Yeah, and yeah. Animals and things like that. So the, this drawing the the superheroes was really hard for me, um, and I'm just lucky that a title came along that I, I was suited for, and um, because it, yeah, I wasn't that good at drawing. You know, like I could have never drawn Thor or like the really big you know hyper muscle kind of characters mm -hmm. i got better at it as i went along yeah um, i think i i'm okay at that now um but i i just happened to be you know pretty decent at something that uh the other artists at the time had a hard time with the, the artists who were good at drawing you know the really muscular you know nine heads tall superhero physiques maybe weren't so good at drawing children. You know, their children look like miniaturized adults. Right, right. So I, I'm lucky that I could do something that, you know, kind of helped me stand out from the crowd and, and was well suited to this book, Power Pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, that's interesting because I feel like a lot of your adults kind of remind me of, you know, other artists who drew superheroes uh, who are more lean and not so uh, muscular. So, um, you know, I, I, I appreciated uh, the fact that, you know, you didn't have the oversized Thor and you, you didn't have like, you know, Spider-Man with, you know, a nine pack. So, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. Let me, uh, let's go to the next one really quick. So the other thing I really enjoyed about your work is that you, you try different art styles and uh, sometimes I wouldn't even know that it was yours. Um, can you talk about some of these covers where, you know, maybe like with the X-Men one, it was very inspired, like movie postery. Oh, right. Um, and then like with the middle one, it, it kind of, you know, obviously it's a different art style. Um, and then, you know, you have Barbie. So can I, can you take me through each one and kind of what you were trying to achieve? Oh gosh, probably trying to meet my deadline was the main thing. <laughs> I was trying to achieve the X Men and the Barbie were were much earlier than the Scarlet Witch. Ah, um, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And early in my career, I would have never attempted something like that Scarlet Witch cover. Uh, the X Men, yeah, I was definitely going for like a a movie poster kind of montage thing. Uh, that was a really fun my fun story. The only time I, I got to work on the X Men, and that was again really early on in my comic book career and I was still trying to figure out what I was doing but I, I still like the but it's, it still holds up pretty well it does yeah it, it caught my eye and I was like hey you know that's obviously kind of like one of those you know uh, classic uh you know Casablanca type of you know right. the wind themed images so yeah I really appreciated that and uh the the Barbie one I gosh I haven't seen this one in a long time I think yeah it's 1990 wow uh, I mean, the Barbie covers were fun. Um, it wasn't a lot of fun working with Mattel. They were, they were tough. Oh, really? Yeah. Anytime you do license work, uh, the, y you're going to run into um, a lot of approval yep. by committee sort yeah. of thing. So that, that could be difficult. But I still like that cover. It's kind of fun. It is, yeah. And then the Scarlet Witch I did fairly recently um and i i did that i wasn't marvel didn't commission me to do that i had done that for a class i was taking I, at the time i was working on a master's degree in illustration at, at scad oh okay and, um i had been playing with with painting and you know some experimental type stuff and uh just you know for the hell of it did that Scarlet Witch cover. I love the character and I've always loved her original costume. Mm -hmm. And that's all, that is completely traditional. There's no Photoshop going on there. And um, after I did it, I, I sent it to uh, an editor at Marvel 
and said, hey, would you ever want to use this? And he was like, yeah, we'll use it. So they did. And, uh, you know, I, I still really, I still really, those are, ac those pansies are actual real pansies from my garden that I plopped down on there. Oh, okay. Then the panels at the top, my husband let me, you know, kind of cannibalize one of his comic books. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. And, um, and the thumbprints are my actual thumbprints. So, uh, oh, yeah, I did not was, even notice that. That was a lot um, of fun to do. Okay. Uh, are, do you have other characters that you've done where you were experimenting with, you know, certain mediums and art styles that, uh, that have yet to be released? Mm, yet nothing that's yet to be released. I haven't had a lot of time for experiment. I'm, I'm more about production. Um, mm. you know, I've, I've been pretty busy. So it, I would love to get back into doing some painting and doing some more things like the Scarlet Witch cover. Um, but it, it takes time to, to play uh, and figure things out. And I just, I just haven't had time to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, well, anyway, I, I just really enjoy that, you know, if I were to show somebody, you know, two out of the three images, they would not be able to tell that they were the, uh, by the same person. So Good. that's what I want. I, yeah. I want to do more things where people are like, oh, my God. You yeah, know yeah. Yes. Right. And the fact that you change your signature too also, you know, adds to the illusion. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so the, these covers are also one of my favorites. Um, I'm assuming it, Roy is your husband? When he you is. June and Roy? Okay, okay, because I didn't realize that's who it was until you mentioned that your husband, Roy, was also an artist. And I was like, I wonder if he helped or if he did these covers with you. Um, can you talk a little about, a bit about the, this series? Um, and, you know, uh, if you were trying something different again uh, in terms of your art style um, or whatever, or however you came up with these covers? Right. Uh a little different. These these were all these were a blast to do. I love doing these covers. I think the first one um, I did was was a Black Widow, mm. and uh, you know I just wanted to come up with something a little more graphic yeah. and designy um, than I usually do. I, I didn't color. I can't remember who colored that one. I didn't color that. Um, my husband Roy inked did the he inked the line work on all okay. these covers um i can ink but not as well as him and it's uh you know it's kind of part of our little cottage industry that he can be inking while i'm drawing yeah um, the the other covers i i did color myself um as, you know now there's nothing really traditional here some of the textures that are created like on the the spider gwen the background texture that was hand created but basically it's photoshop is, is, is these are is Photoshop coloring. Gotcha. And um, it was fun. I'd never gotten to color my own covers before, but the, I, you know, I requested that I be, be allowed to do that. And the editor was like, okay, go ahead. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I love these female characters. I'm probably better at drawing women than, mm. than I am drawing men. And um, I was, I was pleased with how all, how all these turned out. Yeah, you did a lot of them. Uh, I mean, I'm only showing three right now, but I, I you know, there's, you know, there's She-Hulk and uh, uh, a bunch of others. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just pick these three for now because you, you did a lot of them. Uh, and they're all, they're all great. I, I love them. Thank you. Is there a story to this image? Sure. Um, this was done, actually, this was printed in the, the back of the very first issue of Power Pack. And oh. this, is, this is done by um, uh, Walt Simonson. Louise Simonson's husband. And he did one of me and one of Wheezy and one of the inker on the book, Bob Wycheck. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was done, I think it was in, in 84, 83, 84. And uh, yeah, he, he really, he got me. I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a great drawing. And I, I still, I have the original up on, hanging up on my wall in my studio. Um, I think I just have a couple more questions. If you could cast any child actor to play the power pack, who would you ideally cast? I don't really know. 
Me neither. <laughs> no child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can say you don't know because I honestly, I don't, I don't think no, I can name a single. You did get like a twelve-year-old Chris Evans to play Alex. And, <laughs> okay. Know, yeah. All right. Eight, ten-year-old Scarlett Johansson to play Julie. Um, and uh, I don't know, Jack. Jack and Jack Kate. Might be like eight-year-old Russell Crowe or something. <laughs> With an Australian accent. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? And uh, Katie, I don't know. Um, that's kind of a tough one. I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Is there anything you have coming up that you want to talk about? Or um, is there a place where people can follow your work that you want to let um, them know? I, I am on Instagram, kind of. I, <laughs> I, I don't do a lot of posting. I should do more, but I don't. I am on Facebook. Um, if you Google me, I don't have a website. Uh, I know I should put one mm -hmm. together, but I haven't. I have a web page. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that there's going to be, I'm going to be doing some more. There's going to be some pack. And I don't know how much I can say, but, but in the very near future, there's going to be some more um, power pack uh being done by by louise simonson and i the original creators oh but i think I that's exciting that's great i mean i mean that's that's i think all the uh the fans can ask for right is having the original team i i hope i hope they'll enjoy it i think it's going to be i think i mean wheezy is such a good writer and i i should some of the things she's talking about doing are going to be really um, I mean, you're going to get to see, I think, all your old favorite characters, and but there's going to be some things that go on in the plot that are, are definitely going to advance the um, the saga, the ongoing saga of Power Pack. So it, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I, okay. I can feel it. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm I am a recent fan, so I'm very excited. And uh, yeah, uh, it was a, a pleasure and an honor to have you um, on here and to, to speak with you. Well, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, Mark. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe we'll reconnect once uh, there's more power pack out there. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, June. You're welcome. Thank you. Right. Bye.